goal to make sure that you understand the difference between prefixes, suffixes, and how you can break words down in medical terminology. What you will learn very quickly is that medical terminology has a lot of root words, prefixes, and suffixes. So even if you don't understand what the word means, you may be able to tap into the root words, the prefixes, or the suffixes. So as we go through this, um, these are some very important ones that you are going to need to know. So please study these terms. The root word, so there's a root word, cubit. It basically means elbow. Okay, so the elbow area, that's a kind of like an example of a root word. It's the main part of a word. Next is a prefix. So we know prefixes are part of a word at the very beginning. So another example is the word anta, which means forward of or before. Okay, so anta means before. A suffix example is all, with A-L, meaning pertaining to, okay? So let's break this down. The word that I want you all to know that you're gonna hear multiple times throughout this course is antecubital. What in the world does antecubital mean? Antecubital means the area before the elbow. So literally, the area when you straighten your arm out and you look down at your arm, there's a little area where we draw blood from and there's three main veins there, which you'll learn about later. That is your antecubital fossa. Say it with me, antecubital fossa. So, cubit means the elbow, anta means in front of or before, and then ol means pertaining to, antecubital. All right, next. So some more examples of root words. We have arterial, arterio, which basically means it's an artery. <clears throat> and you're gonna learn more about arteries in this course. There is a huge difference between an artery and a vein. Okay, so remember that. Arterial means something to do with the artery. So an example is arteriosclerosis. Arteriosclerosis is basically a hardening of the veins. So sclerosis means hardening. Now why in the world would the arteries harden? Well, if you're not taking care of your body, if you have a lot of stress, if you have any type of um, cholesterol issues, then your arteries get a lot of pressure. If you have high blood pressure, uh, your arteries get a lot of pressure and they start to harden which means they're not flexible. Veins and arteries are supposed to be flexible to be able to take all of the blood that's running through it. Uh, but if it's hardened, it can't, it can burst, right? Uh, think about a, a balloon, that's how your arteries are supposed to be, and then think about a paper towel, right? Like if you have too much pressure in a paper towel, it's just gonna tear. So that's um, arteriosclerosis. Uh, derm. Well, I think this is a pretty simple one. <laughs> Most of us know derm stands for the skin. Heme. Anytime you hear heme, it has something to do with blood. So hematology, by the way, ology, O-L-O-G-Y, means the study of. So think about dermatology. Um, a person who studied about the skin, right? So anytime you hear ology, it has to do with studying. So hematology means studying the blood. Hepato. Have you ever heard of hepatitis? I'm sure you have. If you've heard of hepatitis, then you should know that the re root word comes from hepato, which means liver. And you might be saying, Victoria, where in the world are we getting these terms from? <laughs> Well, a lot of medical terminology came strictly from uh, Latin words. So you, a lot of these are Latin words. But nevertheless, hepato means liver. Itis, I-T-I-S, means inflammation. All right? Inflammation is itis. So hepatitis means what? Inflammation of the liver. Inflammation of the liver. <clears throat> Next, nephr stands for kidneys. So nephron is a part of the kidney. Actually, in case you didn't know this, uh, your kidneys, I, I thought this was so cool when I learned this, so I've gotta share it. 
Your kidneys filter your blood. So all the blood in your body goes through your kidneys and your kidneys filter it. It says, okay, I need water, I'll keep some. I don't need this much water, so I'll dump it. Uh, I like the fact that she ate vitamin C, I'm gonna keep some. Oh my gosh, she ate too much vitamin C, I'm gonna get rid of some. So they literally filter out what's good and what's bad. And then they dump it into your bladder and you pee it out. So that is where your urine comes from. Your, your, that's why kidneys are related to urine because your kidneys filter your blood. Um, next one is osteo. Osteo stands for bone. Osteoma. <clears throat> uh, oma, oma can have a few different word, few different um, meanings. We won't get into that because it's not. You don't need to know it, but you do need to know osteo because uh, one of the things you will be learning about in this class is osteomyelitis. You will be learning about osteomyelitis. Uh, next is flebo or phlebo to me. <laughs> uh, anytime you hear flebo, it means the vein, and then otomy means an incision. So an incision of the vein is what phlebotomy is. Please know that. Please know that. Next, did you know in the medical world, colors have special names? So um, the ones you're going to use, I'll tell you, uh, is going to be cyan. Cyan is blue, and if any of you have a printer, you would know that. Uh, but cyanotic is a medical terminology in this course you're going to need to know. Cyanotic is basically the bluing of the mouth or the skin. Why in the world would a person's mouth get blue or their skin get blue? Probably because they can't get enough oxygen or air. So if you ever walk in a patient's room and around their mouth it looks blue, you need to call for help immediately because they're getting ready to die. Uh, erythro means red. Have you ever heard of an erythrocyte? Erythrocyte. A site, by the way, means cell. So if erythro means red and site means cell, what do you think this word means? Write it down. Let me give you a few minutes. What do you think erythrocyte means? It means red blood cell. Okay, red blood cell. And then leukocyte means a white blood cell. So leuco stands for white. I need you to know leukocyte, I need you to know erythrocyte, and I need you to know cyanotic, period. All right, next we have emia. Anytime, this is a suffix by the way. All these over here were prefixes, right? So they go at the front of a word. Now we're getting ready to go over suffixes, meaning they're at the end of the word. So emia <clears throat> means some type of condition, all right, that has to do with the blood. So anemia, which I'm sure we probably have all heard of, or we know somebody that has some type of form of anemia, means they have a low blood count, right? But anyway, that's what the A means. Because A, by the way, anytime you hear A, it means without. So emia <clears throat> uh, it means without or it means like there's something wrong, okay? So um, anemia and then the emia on the end means that there's a condition. Now you might be saying, well, Victoria, if this has to do with blood, how come the word heme isn't in it? I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> um, some things make sense and some things don't. Next one, inflammation is itis. I told you that on the last slide. So arthritis, we've all heard of arthritis, right? Well, the itis means there's some type of inflammation. Arthro arthritis means like directly in the joints of the bones. Arthritis. Uh, oma, okay, here's oma. In this case, it means like a tumor or some type of a growth. You need to know hematoma. Please note, you need to know hematoma. A hematoma is basically when you're drawing blood, some blood will start to, if you're doing it wrong, some blood may start to accumulate under the skin and a growth will start to bulge. That's a hematoma. And if you've ever gotten your blood drawn and someone messed up and you got a bruise the next day on your arm, you probably had an under the skin hematoma you just didn't see. 
So uh, hematomas are painful, they are annoying, they're not gonna kill anybody, but we definitely don't wanna give somebody a hematoma. So in this course, we'll, we will be teaching you methods to prevent hematomas. Um, stasis means to stop. Hemo, stasis. Ooh, look, there's that hemo. There's the hemo. What does heme mean? What does heme mean? Heme means blood. So hemostasis means stopping or controlling blood. That's what you do as a phlebotomist. When, after you get undrawn blood, you're gonna take a gauze and you're gonna put it over the area where you drew blood. And when you do that, you're controlling or stopping the blood. And that process is called hemostasis. Please know that. Hemostasis, please know that. All right, I told you a tomy was a cut and then a stomy is a colostomy, like an opening for a colostomy. So both of these are like an opening. This one just happens to be for the intestines, uh, and this one happens to be for the, the blood, the veins. You don't need to know about the colostomy. Um, it's just an example of how you need to pay attention to how different they are. The S for stomy is different than a tomy. All right, uh, I'm gonna do directional terms real quick, and then, yeah, I'll do directional terms real quick, and then we will um, move on. So ventral and anterior. And I'm gonna tell you right now, every last one of these directional terms, you have to know. We're gonna be using these in class. We'll be using these to refer to parts of the human body and anatomy, so you need to know them. Um, there also is gonna be a resource in here called Quizlets. Quizlets, please utilize your Quizlets. They are ways to help you reinforce this knowledge. They are tools you can use to study, and you better believe that when you meet me for our um, virtual sessions, I'm going to be asking you these questions. If I ask you these questions and you don't have any idea, you don't know how to answer them, we're gonna have a problem, because that's telling me that you're not studying or retaining. So please use whatever you need to use, any type of resource, I don't care if they're paper flashcards, if you use our Quizlets that we created, whatever, you need to know this information. All right, ventral and anterior, that means the front of your body. The front of your body. Dorsal and posterior means the back of your body. And I'm gonna actually place a uh, resource in here so you can see the anatomical position of a person and this can make more sense. Um, dorsal and posterior is the back, ventral or anterior is the front. We could use either word. We could say dorsal aspect of the hand or we can say the posterior aspect of the hand. But at the end of the day, it is the back surface of the hand. So if you were going to back, backhand and slap somebody, that is the back hand or the dorsal or posterior aspect of your hand. The palm surface, the palmar surface, is your ventral or anterior. So if you were to slap someone right directly across their face with the you know, with your hand going back and then slapping them, that would be the dorsal or anterior aspect of your hand. I'm trying to put it in ways we gonna remember, okay? If I'm slapping somebody, it's ventral. If I'm backhanding them, it's dorsal. Next, lateral. <clears throat> lateral is basically the side of something and away from the axis or the center. So if you were to stand up straight and cut a line down the middle of your body, that is your axis. And then on the left side, your hip, your ankle, your shoulder, all of those would be the lateral aspects of the body. Okay, midline is towards the middle, or medial is towards the middle, so back towards that axis, but we refer to it in healthcare as medial. We say, um, I need you to put the patient on, the lat on their left lateral side. I need you to make sure that you utilize the medial um, vein. I need you to draw blood from the most distal aspect of the patient's left arm. Distal means the farthest point of the origin of structure. So if I told you to draw blood from the most distal aspect of the left arm, where am I asking you to draw blood from? Where am I asking you to draw blood from? The most distal aspect? It would have to be the hand, right? So you could draw blood somewhere in the hand. 
And then proximal means the closest point attached to the body. So what is the most proximal aspect of your left arm? That would be your shoulder. The most distal aspect of your arm, that would be the hand. Make sense? All right, directional terms one more time. Um, we're gonna be doing a Jeopardy game when we meet actually. We'll do a Jeopardy game when we meet to make sure that all these things make sense to you and that you guys have retained this information, okay? Um, but again, do not come to my Jeopardy session, our virtual session, and pick directional terms for 300 and then just sit there with no answer. Please study and know. All right, inferior. Inferior means below and superior means above. I think that one's pretty easy for us to, to think about, right? People who think they're superior got their nose above and in the air. And people who feel inferior feel, feel very below. Uh, very easy way to remember. Next is prone. Prone is when someone is lying on their stomach with their face down. And if you heard when COVID happened, you heard about a lot of patients being placed in the prone position, if you're watching the news, um, a lot of patients were being placed in the prone position because they found that people with COVID were able to breathe better when, when placed in the prone position, which is really weird because we've never seen that before in healthcare. However, the supine position is just basically laying on your back with your face up, right? Which is what most people in the hospital bed do. They're laying in a supine position. Prone is not common. Next, we have flex, flexion and extension. Flexion and extension. Flexion is when you move or bend a joint, and extension is when you straighten it, right? So take your arm, pick your arm up. Don't be lazy, pick your arm up. Bend it, like to wave, that is flexion, and then push it out straight like you're trying to touch the wall, that's extension. Flexion, extension, do it with me. Flexion, extension. Next is abduction. Abduction means to take a body part further away from its central axis. And adduction means to bring the body part closer to the central axis. So let me give you an example. If you are standing, which I would ask you to stand right now, go ahead and stand, and put both of your hands down to your side. When you stand and both of your hands are down to your side, your hands should probably touch your hips. Abduction is when you take your hand and you move it <clears throat> away, okay? And you, you basically are trying to touch the wall. You bring it up like you're trying to fly. That is abduction. Adduction, A-D, is when you bring your hand back down to your hip and it touches your hip. And you know how I'll remember the difference between these two? Because adduction means I'm adding my arm to my body, okay? I'm adding my arm to my body, so I bring it back down close to me. But abduction is the opposite. It goes straight up in the air like you're flying because it's away from your body. If you cannot remember abduction, just remember adduction means to add your arm and push it down to your body. All right, that um, concludes this video, this lecture, and I will see you in the next one.